Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Patch, and I'm here today to read a little spot of feelings, being an emotional detective. And this is written and illustrated by Diane Albert. But I'm not alone today. I brought some new friends with me. Here is Peaceful Spot. And I have Anxiety Spot. Look at that. Look at his face. And I have Scribble Spot. And sadness spot. I have confidence spot. Ooh, I have angry spot. I have love spot. And finally, I have happiness spot. So they're going to be hanging out with me today during the story. Hi, my name is Scribble Spot, and I'm a little spot of feelings. I'm so good at spotting and naming feelings, I actually became an emotional detective. So here's Scribble Spot. How did you become an emotional detective? It all started when I was tangled with emotions. I didn't know how I was feeling. So I spent a lot of time learning all about emotions. I learned that emotion spots can show up for many reasons. They can show up to help you when people say and do things and when things happen around you. Then these emotions start to create feelings. So see all the different colors of scribbles that he has there? Well, they're made up of all of these different feelings. And definitely there are times when you might be having some feelings. You don't just have one feeling. You might be feeling some love, some anger, some confidence. You might be happy. You might feel sad. You might have a whole jumble of emotions, which then lands you into kind of feeling like that scribble spot. I'm not really sure what you're feeling. Feelings are very important, but when you don't know how you're feeling, it can be hard to explain what you need or how someone can help you. Sometimes an emotion cre can create too many feelings and they get all jumbled together. So I made these feeling cards to help you name your feelings. When you learn how to name your feelings, it will help you get along with other people better and to solve problems. Then you will be on your way to becoming an emotion detective just like me. So look, here's our peaceful spot. See him right there? And our happy spot right there. Ooh, and our angry spot right there. And loved and anxious. And remember, anxious, another word for anxious is worried, right? And then our sadness spot and our confidence spot. When you believe in yourself, all of these different cards. One trick I use a lot is this feelings chart. Can you point out how you are feeling right now? Way to go. You're already spotting your feelings. So look at all these different feelings on this on these two pages. And sometimes somebody might say to me, Mrs. Patch, I feel really angry. And they might be feeling angry, but also what they might be feeling is hurt or lost or stressed, confused or worried right? They might be feeling left out. There could be all kinds of other feelings underneath the anger spot that's making you feel angry. So maybe taking this chart and figuring out what different feelings are building up to make you feel angry. Another trick I like to use is when spotting feelings is to look at face movements. Use a mirror to look closely at your eyebrows your eyes, and mouth. You will see how they move when you are showing your feelings. These movements are called facial expressions. Facial expressions are clues 
to spotting feelings. So looking at someone's face, look at angry spot, right? We can tell, look at his eyebrows. They're kind of bent in. His eyes are kind of close together. He's got that frown on his face, right? You can tell just by looking at angry spot how he might be feeling. Other clues are the way your body moves and how you stand. This is called body language, right? So look at his body right there. He's looking down at the ground. His shoulders are sort of hunched over and he's got his hands down in his pockets. He's looking down. You can see just by looking at him that something's not okay. Voice tone and volume are clues too, right? So if you're talking really, really loud and yelling, right? You can tell that somebody might be angry or upset or if somebody's kind of talking like this really quiet and not using their voice, they might be feeling worried or sad or confident like me right now. When I'm talking, I'm looking at you, my chin is out and I have a confident, strong voice, right? Those sorts of sounds let you know that possibly somebody might not be feeling so good. Now use these clues to spot your feelings and name it. Let's look at a peaceful spot. When it shows up, it can make you feel relaxed and calm, right? Oops, peaceful spot. Peaceful clues are relaxed eyebrows, focused and learning eyes, soft voice and breathing, and ready to learn body. Once you name it, the final step is to say it and give one reason why. Start with, I feel relaxed when I'm listening to music, right? So when do you feel peaceful? I feel calm when I'm drawing. I feel relaxed when I listen to classical music. Great job. Now let's, let's look at some more feelings. This is your happiness spot. When it shows up, it can make you feel excited or delighted. That's another great word for um, a happy feeling, right? Happiness clues are eyebrows raised, eyes are crinkling, mouth corners are turned up and smiling. When do you feel happy? I feel excited when I learn something new. I feel delighted when I make a new friend, right? So think about things that make you feel happy. This is your love spot. Where is this love spot? Right here, <laughs> right? This is your love spot. When it shows up, it can make you feel loved and appreciated. Love clues are eyebrows are raised, mouth turned upward smiling, wrinkled eyes, blushing and rosy cheeks. When do you feel loved? I feel appreciated when I get a thank you card. I feel loved when my dog kisses me. Just think, think about some things that happen to make you feel loved. This is your anxiety spot, right? When it shows up, it can make you feel scared or nervous, maybe worried. Anxiety clues are eyebrows are turned up and wrinkled, head and eyes look down, slouching and not smiling, maybe sweating and having a tummy ache or a headache. When do you feel anxious? I feel scared when I hear a loud noise, ooh, like thunder. I feel nervous when I meet new people. Mm-hmm, that might happen. This is your sadness spot. When it shows up, it can make you feel sad or left out. Sadness clues are eyebrows turned down, watery eyes or crying, mouth turned down, and sometimes maybe hands covering your face. I feel left out when nobody plays with me. I feel sad when I miss somebody. What kinds of things make you feel sad? Ooh, here's one, ready? Anger spot. Dun, dun, dun. This is your anger spot. When it shows up, it can make you feel frustrated or irritated. 
anger clues are eyebrows are lowered and turned down, eyes are very focused, mouth is frowning, strong voice and crossed arms. When do you feel angry? Ooh, I feel frustrated when I can't find something that I'm looking for. And I feel irritated when I miss a basket in basketball. Mm. So maybe when you're trying to learn something new and you make mistakes, you start to feel a little irritated or angry. And here we go. This is your confidence spot. When it shows up, it can make you feel proud and brave. Confidence clues are eyebrows are relaxed, good eye contact, mouth corners are turned up and smiling, and you use a strong voice. When do you feel confident? I feel brave when I sing. I feel proud when I work hard. What sorts of things make you feel proud? Once you learn how to name your feelings, you'll discover new things about yourself. It will also help you feel amazing. Did you know that being able to spot your own feelings helps you spot them in others? What feeling is everyone experiencing here? So are you ready to start training to be an emotional detective? So look at this guy right here. Look at the body language and the tears coming out of his eyes. Right? I think he's feeling sad. Ooh, and look at her. She's got her arms crossed. She's got her eyebrows kind of turned in. She's looking angry to me. This one's looking silly, so happy and silly. This one's looking maybe excited. I think this one back here, she's drawing. She looks like she's feeling peaceful, just like this guy right here. Ooh, and I wonder what this, this person with the glasses looks maybe a little bit worried. Kind of the look on their face. This little person right here looks happy and content. Ooh, this guy with the basketball, he looks frustrated or irritated. This one definitely looks peaceful. She got her legs crossed. She's looking like she's kind of meditating. This guy right here, he looks confident. Looks like he's doing okay. She looks pretty sad. I see a tear. She's holding a picture close. And this one right here, he looks a little left out to me or lonely, definitely sad. So if you saw any of these kids in your classroom or out on the playground, what could you do to help the ones who aren't having such a good day turn their day around? How can you help them to feel a little bit better? Because once you detect an emotion, you know, and you, and you think you know about it, then it's your job to maybe try to help that person feel better, right? So really important part of this whole book is I want you to be thinking about what feelings you're having, not just mad, sad, or glad, right? But what feelings are making those up? Are you happy and glad because you're excited, elated, um, feeling confident and proud? What, what emotions are kind of underneath your little anger spot when you're feeling angry. Are you lonely, scared, nervous, maybe a little bit worried about something, right? And maybe you're just a big old jumble of feelings and that's okay too, but taking the time to kind of break it down, pulling each color out and figuring what's making up all of those feelings. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for listening to my book today and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.